welcome to the video where I discuss how to dress up your underwear sewing patterns. In this video, I'm going to go over things I've learned along the way while sewing my undies. I'm going to discuss things that might have popped up in the tips section of the undies patterns, what I learned by actually sewing panties, as well as the variations between the brief style undie to the different styles of undies like the boxer or thong. I'm going to go over straps, lace, and how to make a bow. I expect if you're going to be making a pair of undies for yourself, you'll want to access various tutorials for the exact methods you'd like to use. So in this video, I'll be directing you to a few guides as a starting point that I use to learn to do the various techniques because frankly, I'm a beginner sewist myself and I'd rather direct you to someone else that knows more than me. The reason I'm making these series on undies making is because I'd like to point you in the right direction. So while I did make a tutorial in the last video and we'll be doing a bit of tutorial in the rest of the video, I hope that you take a look at my source material to understand the things I didn't mention. Even if you aren't planning on making undies but are simply along for the enjoyment of a sewing video, I hope this teaches or exposes you to something new or that you'll find worthwhile. Please know I am not formally trained in anything sewing related and am simply sharing my own understanding of sewing that I've learned from the past few months and literally sewing underwear over and over again. This was a fun project, no joke. Anyway, my name is Alex and this is Whispered Moon. First off, let's go over the pattern list I gave you guys in the last video. Go watch my last video if you want to. It's all about this project. I'll have a link to it in the description. Basically, I put these lists in the last video. They might have changed slightly because I needed to spell check some things. If you screenshotted this slide last time, screenshot this one again since they're improved. If I make any more improvements to these slides by the next video, I'll include updated ones in the finale of this video series. I'm even planning to make a blog post eventually, which would have the most up-to-date information, although I have nothing posted yet. That will probably be in a few months time. I'll be posting on my website down below. There's nothing on the site yet, but the link is there for future reference, okay? Now, these patterns. I made this list in alphabetical order of everything I know to my knowledge of free patterns online. These are scaled patterns that are PDFs and don't require much, if at all, effort to be printed out and taped together to make something wearable. Really, even if you want to make one of these as a first sewing project, I think you'll be okay. Yeah, if you're using stretch fabrics or elastic and are scared that it'll be too hard, there are ways to make it easier. And in this video, I'll discuss some of the hacks that I know to make these things run under the sewing machine easier if you don't have a fancy serger like mine and just want to use a basic sewing machine. Before I do that, I'd like to address a little bit more about the patterns I've included on these lists. Obviously, I'm human and a single person researching these things. I'm not an AI that can scan through the entire internet. Nor am I omnificent to who made or plans to make an undies pattern in the future. I am but a simple American who who only knows English fluently and therefore cannot adequately transverse all online spaces. If you know of a free underwear pattern that I missed in this list that is scaled to multiple sizes, please alert me so I can add it to this list. I would very much so like to keep this list as up to date and keep it as comprehensive as possible. If you do notice on this list, I have little parentheses which include language information. EN means English, FR means French, etc. Google it if you don't know language abbreviations. When I was in high school, I took Spanish, French, German, Latin, and Japanese. I don't know how to speak any of these languages though. I only know enough to muddle my way through a web page enough in, I mean, context clues help, especially when all websites are really set up with like the same user interface. I mean, if you've ever been on the internet or gone online shopping, you know how to find the shop tab or sort by information, where the cart goes or order now. Plus, I'm sure you've heard of Google Translate before. And not only that, you can translate the entire web page into whatever language is on Google Translate. You see this button right here? Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work, especially if the UI is set up weird, but most of the time you should be okay, especially if you set your mind to it. Now, I'm saying this because all sewing patterns, while being unique to the pattern themselves and what shape they're cut out and be sewn to, that's pretty unique and maybe the instructions differ a little bit, but that's pretty much where the differences end. 
While I was making all these underwear, I started off with the English patterns first because of course that's what I can actually teach myself with. Once I moved on to the patterns in different languages, I tried using the instructions, but uh, really, mm, you don't need to necessarily use the same instructions list from the pattern it came with. You can pick and choose. Okay, let me give an example. I wanna use this Polish pattern. The Monica, say for example. I do not speak Polish. It's way different than anything I learned in high school. And if you remember, I said I spelled check my slide here mainly because of this. I called one of Claudia's patterns here by the wrong name. Anyway, so you wanna make the Monica. What we're gonna do is look at the pattern pieces. How many gusset pieces are you going to cut out? That will tell you what set of instructions you're going to use. The Monica has you cut out two gusset pieces. So guess what? It's a closed gusset pattern. Use any of the instructions listed here. If you're comfortable with English, use an instruction booklet from an English pattern. If you're more comfortable with German or Spanish, French, Dutch, you have options. The only really necessary details you need from the original pattern for our example, the Monica, is printing information, mainly that being for international patterns, aka all non-English patterns. They probably use A4 or legal size paper because only a few English speaking countries use letter paper. And the sizing chart too, you need to check out the sizing chart. Just Google translate the words on the chart and try to find the hip or waist and compare that to your own measurements. Oh, and Google translate the pattern piece names themselves to find the front and the back. But really, like, you shouldn't have any problems. Most importantly, most importantly, I found this out through trial and error. You need to find the fabric requirements. <laughs> Unfortunately, what I didn't learn in school is sewing terminology in different languages. Good luck with that. You're on your own. I do have one tip for that. Look up what other people on Instagram have been sewing for that particular pattern. What fabrics do the people who are writing posts in the native language of the pattern, what fabrics are they using for that pattern? What is the sample in the pattern or from the blog of the brand? What images are they using for that pattern? I've put in my list stretch patterns and woven patterns because that's what I think the pattern patterns themselves are implying. Sometimes the vocabulary differs and I just don't know. I haven't asked questions to the brands about anything if any of the pattern makers that I've mentioned even know about my existence. I haven't asked anyone permission or anything. Why would I? This is a personal blog critique thing, whatever. Anyway, if you want to use the original instructions that are for the original pattern and you don't want to mix and match, you can try copying and pasting the instructions to Google Translate, but some PDFs unfortunately require permission to copy text from the document, so you might not be able to do that. What you can do is try your best to look at any pictures that might be provided. You can also check out the brand's blog if one is available. The brand's Instagram, if they make a post about the pattern, might mention helpful information. Listen, most of them probably have YouTube tutorials too. They might not have subtitles, but it's better than nothing. Why I make that tangent is because I don't want you to discount any of these patterns. Really, I wish I could find more patterns in non-English spaces of the internet, but I don't know the sewing language, which is much more than the conversational Google Translate language that I do know. How I found these non-English patterns is by running synonyms of different vocabulary words that have the same meaning through Google Translate and hitting search on Google. Typically, this would lead me to sewing blogs run by sewists that would then teach me better words to search in blog titles. I think this is my best guess. This Google Translate and search would only really work for the things that I could find context clues for. I really only know how to search for things that use the English alphabet. It gets too confusing for me after that. That's how I found these patterns if you're interested in doing a similar search. Now, it's not only patterns that I found, but a couple of guides as well. Truly, I wish I found these guides earlier, like in the early stages of researching this project, but I didn't follow a lingerie brand, so I didn't know. Specifically, I want to point you to an ebook PDF thing from Studio Castura. Highly recommend downloading this. There's some really beautiful sewing photos in it, wonderful instructions, and a whole bunch of cool alterations and pattern drafting variations to add lace inserts to your sewing patterns. There's a French guide too. I downloaded it, but I haven't quite translated yet from Eclipse Lingerie Studio. It looks pretty detailed though, and I have a few more PDFs, but those are the main two that I know of. Actual sewing tips and things that I learned 
learned along the way. What can I share to make your life easier at the machine? What I can say is that the size of the zigzag stitches intention make a difference. I had changed the width to a smaller zigzag stitch when I sewed the elastic on these and the elastic is kind of stretched out. The bigger stitches filled out most of the elastic like this and it looked a lot nicer. For most of my full over elastics, I ran basting and final stitches so that I sewed over the elastic twice. You can attach the elastic all in one line of stitching if you want. I actually tried this method with these pairs of undies since that's what the pattern designer did in her tutorial. It worked out great. Although just as I said that a stitch that's too small doesn't work out the best. If the stitch is too big, it might run over the edge and make the elastic look like this. Easier error at its finest, right? Now, say you don't have one of these nifty overlockers. You can do everything on the sewing machine. If you're using woven fabric, straight stitch, the gussets and sides, and you're golden. With stretch fabrics though, some people get nervous. I believe this is because sometimes sewing machines like to eat stretch fabrics and laces probably too, or maybe you just can't figure out thread tension. The stitches just don't look right. I have three things to try. They're not revolutionary, but I mean, I find them helpful. I'll save my favorite one for last. Firstly, get some smooth thread. I like Guterman all-purpose or Sewology. Expensive thread actually does help sometimes. I don't know, my machines are thread snobs, or I'm just a bad sewist. <laughs> the second is Microtex needles love them. They're really pointy, the opposite of ballpoint, I think, but they work best for me. I like the ones that have 90 on them, I think. I don't really pay attention to the eye size that much, but I usually pick 90, 14. Lastly, I found this really helpful with making buttonholes too. Sandwich your fabric with paper. Tissue paper, printing paper, newspaper, you can even apply water soluble sticker interfacing to the seams, whatever you think is best. Although if you do use sticker interfacing, still add a tissue paper sandwich. This paper sandwich, while seemingly overboard and ridiculous, gets rid of some of the friction and makes it a little less likely that your fabric will get stuck in the machine. I will say you definitely need to run a sample piece through your machine first to get rid of any tension issues, but it definitely helps. Oh, and remember with stretch fabrics, zigzag stitch. Also, you don't technically need to finish your seams if you don't want to, but you can still play with them if you want to. Paper sandwiches make them a lot easier to play with though. Other general tips, size ranges. I'll get together hip or waist size ranges of all the patterns for the next video, but for now, let me guide you through how to alter these patterns to include more sizes. And this goes both ways. If you need to make the patterns bigger or smaller, look at the size chart for the pattern. Observe the hip measurements. Do some basic addition or subtraction, whatever or however you like, and figure out what your size is from the size chart. Typically, the sizes are spaced evenly, like maybe two inches increase for each side or two inches decrease. I don't know. Find out what your size would be if the chart was extended from that. Print out the patterns and look at the grading lines. Observe how each size is graded. How much space is between each of the graded lines? Should be even, right? Grab a pencil. Going one size at a time, extend the pattern until you get to your size. If you need more paper, simply tape some more on. Here is an article that explains this in more detail. I've used this guide before. It gives some visual aid if you need it and does more mathematical stuff if you need it. Typically, you can just eyeball it, but some people need the scientific eye. It works the same for sizing down. Note though, if if you are using stretch fabrics and you're just like a few inches above the size chart, I didn't grade my patterns up for this project and they fit fine, although I'm very close to most of the size charts if they didn't include me. Most homemade undies patterns are graded much larger than ready to wear. I'm not saying this will work for everyone though, but if you're close to the size range, you might not have to do any extra work. I bring up elastic though because I want to talk about thongs, specifically the back elastic part of the thong. I like making my elastic very snug. I did this with my first thong and I mean it fit maybe a little bit too close to home. I suggest attaching your elastic with an ever so gentle stretch of elastic. If you're a sewing maniac and can properly attach elastic without stretching it, I cannot have uh, shown. Attach the elastic without stretching, but gently stretching worked out perfectly for me. That is all. Lace undies now. I have this beautiful lace set here. The instructions were in German, but that was kind of a blame for me. I sewed my seams together on the outside 
side right here so the scallop could be on the outside. Truly, I literally just top stitched them. I did not sew a seam and then top stitch them. I just top stitched them. With the other seams that didn't have the scallop, I put them together normally, then I top stitched them. Also, concerning stretch lace and lace in general, although my examples are stretch lace because as I said in my last video, I only use stretch fabrics for this video. Lace fabric width is pretty narrow in comparison to the bolts of regular fabric. This German pattern I used has instructions for how to do piecing, although in German. What you do is place the pattern on your fabric, observe where you don't have room, fold the pattern piece back, and cut the pattern piece. Then, as you're cutting the fabric out, add seam allowance to the place you cut. Sew so these pieces together before you do anything else, and you're back on track. With lace undies, I like doing lots of top stitching, so I top stitch these lines too. Strappy undies! These were fun. I learned a lot along the way. Mainly, I like sewing things together wrong because I don't pay attention. Let me tell you all about the things that I did wrong so you don't be me. Cute undies, right? Let's look at the elastic here. Next time, I would insert the strap elastic from the interior of the waistband so that the elastic does not show up from the outside. There were a few pattern pieces that has instructions for attaching strap elastic, but really, it's not a difficult process, although I don't really know how to make them aesthetically pleasing. I use zigzag stitches, however, I suggest you attach your straps with straight stitches because it's prettier and the attachment location of the elastic isn't the part of the underwear that needs to stretch. Ugh. <laughs> to put the strappy metal bits on, I grabbed a spaghetti strap shirt or you could also grab a bra and I copied the strap assembly from that. It worked out great. Oh, and make sure you get the same size rings and sliders as your strap elastic though. That's very important. For the thongs that have elastic backs like this, this is fold over elastic that has been stitched over. You can use Paco or other lingerie elastics if you like, but fold over and Paco are the best options for these kinds of thongs. There wasn't really much else I found tricky to do. Boxers are easy. I just hem them like I would a t-shirt. Let's move on to how to make a bow. Well, I don't actually want to show you how to make a bow. Here's the tutorial I I learned how to make the bow from. And here are some cool variations that I found that although I haven't tried to make, look pretty cool and maybe you want to try them? Variation sake, you know? I am including the section on bows not because I want to show you how to make a bow of the same size every time with a fork, but because I want to show you this trick I figured out myself. I noticed that my bows were fraying. What is one to do with a bow made out of ribbon that frays? Well, I for one looked at said bow and immediately thought, Plastic. I am holding a non-natural synthetic fabric that can melt. So just like with the paracord bracelets I made in high school, I took out a candle, mainly because I'm doing this in bulk. If you're just making one or two bows, literally just use a lighter or a match. I just want to save on gas and candle spring to mind. A lighter is a lot easier to use though. Hover the ends of the ribbon over the flame quickly until you see the ends melt together. The ribbon burns quickly, so use your own discretion wisely when working with the flame, of course. Adult supervision if needed. After I made my bows, I hand sewed them on. So cute. I didn't put them on every pair and some I put multiple on, mainly to hide ugly seams. Frankly, I think I did a great job with everything. This project has been a huge undertaking, much bigger than I thought it would be. I learned a lot about sewing along the way. I was really scared about elastic before this. I thought you needed a special needle or whatever to use it. I mean, I never had any special needles when sewing together masks last year, but since I would be directly sewing over elastic for this project, I thought I needed something special. There are elastic needles that you can get, which I would suggest if you want to, but Universal and Microtex worked out fine for me. As I said previously, I am by no means an expert. I have many gaps in this tutorial because I have many gaps in my own knowledge. Some things I just don't know how to explain. I can't do it properly. My sewing is good enough. And personally, I'm fine with that. I improve with every project I do. It is my current opinion that learning things gradually and consistently 
is good. By saying this, if you're looking for a pair of underwear, pick yourself out a pattern if you'd like to, and look at the blog pattern website where it came from. Read the instructions, watch a few YouTube tutorials. This video is one of many. A YouTube tutorial is a dime a dozen. So seek out other tutorials, literally. This is how I learned how to sew, through other YouTube tutorials and pattern instruction booklets and blogs. This video and the last I hope was a good starting point. I hope from these two videos I've given you a direction to start in. For me, the starting point is always the most intimidating part. I know people know how to dupe skills and stuff, but I never know how they know where to look. Hopefully I taught you where to look specifically for underwear sewing tutorials now. Okay, cool. Yeah. If you have questions, feel free to ask away in the comments. I will tell you anything you want to know about this project or at least hopefully point you in the right direction to get an answer if I don't know. Or maybe someone that does know will read it and tell you. Whatever happens. The next video is the finale of this series. In that video, I'm going to give my review of the actual creations and categorically rank the undies and give out some superlatives like, does it actually cover my butt all the way? Anyway, I hope that you all have had a great week and I hope the next week will be pretty good too. See you guys in the next one.